Oh, so from the, from the Lurian perspective, your brain is basically something that acts, it acts in the world and perceives the world. And the back half of the brain, roughly speaking, is for perceiving, and the front half is for acting. Now, here's something to think about, you know. I'm sure you've been taught the prefrontal cortex is the seat of abstract thought. You know, or the seat of executive decision making, for example. It's like, I'm not so convinced about that theory for a variety of reasons, but one of the things that's, that is true about the prefrontal cortex is that during the course of evolution, it grew out of the motor cortex. So if you look at this representation, the top one, there's the primary zone, which is the motor strip, and then the secondary zone, which is the premotor strip, and the tertiary zone, which is the prefrontal cortex. And basically what happened was that first animals learned how to act, and then they learned how to represent actions before they implemented them. So the purpose of thinking is to represent actions before you implement them. But it's not only actions, because there aren't only actions. Right? Because to act, you also have to perceive. And so really what the prefrontal cortex does is run simulations of how a personality might operate, an embodied personality might operate, in a fictional world. And that's what you're doing when you're thinking. It's also what you're doing when you're watching movies, or reading fiction, or any of those sorts of things. Right? Instead of having to act something out, and potentially dying as a consequence of it, you can watch something being simulated and see what happens, and then if the outcome is good, you can implement it, and if the outcome isn't good, then you can let it die. And so, I think it was Alfred North Whitehead that said, um, the purpose of thought is so that we can let our hypotheses die instead of us. That's smart. That's a very smart thing. And so, wh what's happened in some senses, that human beings have gone from evolution to meta-evolution, right? Instead of evolving, we can model evolution and then implement the ideas, the, the personality, so to speak, that we think are most functional. And we let, the, we let our fantasy do the selection instead of the actual world. Man, it's a brilliant solution. It's a brilliant solution. So, in some sense, the sensory unit, which is the back half of the brain, is setting up your frameworks of perception and integrating them, and then the front half is determining how to sequence activities and modes of perception in order to act successfully in the world. Right? And so there's the actual implementation of the action, and then there's the modeling of the implementation, which is what gives rise to thinking. And I, I do think that it's very useful to think of thinking as a simulated personality, fundamentally. You're running avatars of yourself, in some sense, in your imagination, and trying to determine which ones are going to be successful. Now, you may have noticed, given that I used the word avatar, that we've also now figured out who ex how to externalize the process of fantasy back into the actual world, so that we can run simulations in fantasy on machinery, and we can play out potentials that way, instead of only having to do it in our brain. You know, and it's... That's very, very smart. That's, that's extraordinarily smart, and it's really going to change things. God only knows for how. So, one of the things about Luria's model, you see that there's primary, secondary, and tertiary zones. The tertiary zones are zones of integration. The primary zones are zones where, especially in the sensory systems, where each sense is elaborated in its, in its highest resolution sense before it becomes integrated with the other senses. And so the tertiary zones are actually areas of overlap between the, sense, between the senses. So for example, when you, when you read silently, my experience of reading silently is I hear the words in my head, so to speak. Well, you might think, well, how, you know, you look at a word and you hear it in your head. How, how in the world is that possible? And the answer is, your eyes are using your auditory system. So there's overlap between the visual and the auditory system in the tertiary zones, and so basically what you're doing is hearing with your eyes. And, you know, your consciousness has this property of unification, right? It's sort of like a unified experience, and Luria believed that it was the tertiary zones that gave rise to that phenomena of unified experience. He's a very smart character. So, the point is, is that the motor unit is basically utilized, the part of us that, that does planning, forward planning and forward thinking, is utilized to lay out simulated personalities in the world. That's a good way of thinking about it. So, okay, so that's one kind of neurological model. 